individual buck beds. And this is what this is a little more precise and it, it really keys into your property and a plan for your property. But bucks during during the hunting season, not during the summer, we're talking about basically the October through early January time period, like to bed by themselves, especially mature bucks. So what I like to do is set up these hinge cuts that basically satellite the doe bedding group hinge cuts. But this will be an area usually about five to 10 yards across, and I'll start with a foundation tree. And that's a fairly good sized tree in that six to 10 inch diameter that I'll hinge cut about shoulder high, and I'll get a nice horizontal limb. And then I will cut smaller trees and pull those over on top of it. And the idea is to create a dome. And some of these the smaller ones, I don't even need to cut. I call them whips, and we will literally pull them down and tie them loosely to the original foundation tree. And the idea is to build a dome that deer can enter and exit, and there's just a large enough area, say three to five feet long, three to four feet across, where an individual buck can bed in there. He can see, he's got some security cover around him. You might do a little screening around the edges and you'll put one or two nice uh, backstop logs in there. You'll rake it all out. You'll, you'll actually spend a lot of time and be very pre precise in making this as comfortable and as effective for a, a buck to bed in as you can because once you can produce that, you know, it, it's the four star hotel thing. You know, um, again, when it comes to, to uh, building these buck beds, it, it takes a lot of foresight and planning. Um, it's, it's all relative to food sources, travel corridors, where the, the doe family groups are, and ideally it has to be in a location a little bit higher than, than some of the other topography so the bucks can scent check a lot of the uh, surrounding areas. Grand scheme of things are, I don't know exactly which bedding area the deer are gonna prefer, but I like to give them every option that they would need on the property. In hinge cutting, there's a technique we use, we call them screening cuts. And this is a little more, uh, it's, it's easier to do in, when you run into a lot of the smaller trees, you get into bigger trees, it's a little bit more difficult. But the idea for screening is to screen your movement most of the time for entry to and, and exit from your tree stand, say getting by a food source or actually getting into the stand and getting out of the stand. The one thing you don't want to do when you're hinge cutting for screening is to cut high. You want to start low, usually about knee high or so, and you want these trees to lay down. You have to kind of look at the tree first and get, you know, uh, look at how those limbs, how far do those limbs extend from the trunk on the sides of the tree. And that kind of helps you pinpoint where your first cut is going to be. But the one thing you don't want is deer to bed underneath it. So you want to make it thick and, and throw a lot of limbs and debris into the openings that are created where you're doing the cutting. And you're trying to, to lean these trees in a parallel direction. And it's going to be narrow. You know, it's, it's not a, a wide structural hinge cut. It can be five yards wide and it may go 100, 200 yards long to screen your motion. Um, another hinge cutting and detail work uh, technique that I use is I call them steering tunnels. And these could be anywhere from, from 50 to maybe 150 yards long where it's an area that I actually want the mature buck to walk. And typically these are from bedding areas to food sources or from food source to food source along a thick area that naturally has good travel and you want to put a, a bow hunting stand or a fixed position stand in there. And I actually start by walking through with a chainsaw and cutting any of the logs that would be in the way. And I, I trim those and cut those out of the way, usually two to three feet wide. And then I come through with a walk behind brush hog and there's several of them on the market. They're usually in that 24 to 30 inches wide and I will mow my path and I like to do it Rather than straight, I like to wind it because I want to reduce the sight vision of these deer as they're traveling. And this is usually through fairly thick cover. After I've mowed that path through there, then I walk along with a bunch of pre-cut parachute cord. I cut them in four to six feet long. I, I hang them over my neck. And I will about every five to 10 yards take these inch and a half, uh, three quarter inch saplings that are on each side of this 
steering path that I've already trimmed and mowed, and pull those over and create an arch, and tie that arch together. Tie it loosely because you want these trees to continue to live. And what you're literally doing is you're creating a tunnel system that the deer can move through. These are great for bow hunting uh, techniques. And depending on the wind, you can set two stands for your, your cold northwest uh, cold front winds or your predominant south and southwest winds. And then, regardless of the conditions, you can slip in there some morning and be ready for those bucks when they come cruising through looking for those first does or an estrus.